Hello everyone, I'm Shane1288 from Perfectly Unscientific Gaming. Today we're in Star Trek Online, and Star Trek Online videos are something new for us, so we'll see how these go, and who knows, we might find something uh, along the lines of this uh, in the future as a regular feature on this channel. So yesterday, the Tier 6 Temporal Science Vessel, or the Vern Temporal Science Vessel, or perhaps more effectively known as the Tier 6 Wells, was released into game. The Wells was initially launched back in 2012 as one of the uh, first uh, science vessels to come out of a lockbox, second to the Tholian Orb Weaver. And the Wells earned a place in many's uh, tool belt, especially in the PvP community, for a ship that could do it all. It could be a full-blown heel boat, it could be a control boat, or you could kit it out with a good amount of speed to hunt down cloaked ships, Klingon or Romulan. And along with that, you'll also note that there is no default tactical seating. And this was leveraged by many to make heel boats that uh, were as effective as dedicated engineering healers, but just faster and rely on your team to send you tactical teams and whatnot when you needed it. So overall, the Wells was pretty much a do-it-all boat in the 2012-2013 uh, PvP meta and still could probably be very powerful today in the hands of a PvPer. And the reason why I'm going through some of this lineage about the ship and going back to 2012-2013 with PvP in particular is because the Wells and its Tier 6 version, the Tier 6 Vern Temporal Science Vessel now, uh, only comes with one specialist seat and that's a Lieutenant Commander uh, science temporal that you see down here and there was some reaction in the community that this might not be enough because you know we see other ships come out uh, that have been made tier 6 or previously tier 5 for example the Zindi carrier got a lieutenant commander intel and lieutenant command seat so why didn't this get a second uh, specialist seat was being asked and quite honestly the wells the tier 5 version and now this tier 6 version are very powerful ships and, you know, in addition to, you know, just being a all-around decent science vessel, it comes with the Tipler Cylinder uh, science console that grants the temporal backstep ability. And if you are using this in conjunction with a Mannheim device or the console from the Paradox Dreadnought, you will hold everyone within a 5km radius for 7 seconds when you backstep. And that has the potential to be hilariously obnoxious in PvE. And it also was obnoxious in PvP as well back in the 2012-2013 PvP meta. So this ship is already very powerful as it is today, even with only one Lieutenant Commander Science uh, Specialist seat. And what's more, you can take this enhanced Tipler Cylinder and put it on any uh, ships that you have now. So if you have a different ship, say for example, a Jem'Hadar attack ship, you could now run the enhanced Templar cylinder on that and get the back step for your Jem'Hadar attack ship. So that's how powerful the Vern Temporal Science Vessel is today. And that combined with its reputation from the old days of PvP in 2012 and 2013, is probably why Cryptic decided to go with only one specialist seat. Now you might be wondering, what are we going to talk about today? We're not just going to talk about, you know, how things were back in the day, but let's actually talk about the ship itself here and see uh, what we uh, got up to with it. So first and foremost, it comes with a trait called Out of Time, and what this does is if you're flying at above 88 impulse, it will give you a little bit of cold damage in return for giving you stacks of out of time that when you drop below 88 impulse it will reduce your bridge officer cooldowns by 2% for each stack of out of time. 
So if you spend 15 seconds at above 88 impulse, you will reduce your bridge officer cooldowns by 30%, which, for those of you guys who use ox to bat builds, is the same as using ox to bat with three very rare technician doffs. I didn't use out of time in my testing with this because I was focused more on damaging traits than um, actual uh, using the ship uh, trait that it came with. You see I have it equipped here just because I was just uh, playing around with it before starting this video. So let's go through a bit of the build here. Um, it's a standard science uh, exotic setup really with a particle emission plasma torpedo up front for spreading those uh, particle emission plasma gas clouds that do a good amount of damage. And then the energy weapon slots are just loaded up with uh, various set weapons that provide some kind of benefit. Terran Task Force Disruptor's there just because it's the most powerful beam in the game. Advanced Temporal Chronoton uh, Beam Array will reduce our cooldowns if it manages to proc. This might be getting thrown away in the future on this build. Then in the south we have uh, the Chronometric Polar on Beam Array, the Omni, and the Cranum Torpedo to complete the Chronometric Calculation Set, which gives us this nice click ability here for an increase in exotic damage uh, based on our weapon power. And for a deflector, we're running a Colony Deflector here with a little bit extra uh, EPG on it, but the main reason is for the plus 15% critical severity it will be giving us when our hull is high because uh, in addition for the science exotic abilities the severity and crit chance that we get from particle manipulator the critical severity part of that does stack with various sources like the um, character severity that we get on this deflector and on the bioneural infusion circuits down here. Then for our uh, secondary deflector, just, you know, the uh, basic deteriorating deflector here, control X, EPG focus, and we use that to proc our destabilizing resonance beam and charged particle bursts and structural analysis. Impulse engine wise and shield wise at this point, uh, the two piece temporal set, which gives us a 25% uh, bonus damage for damage over time and hazard effects, so that's things like our subspace vortex. Uh, that stacks up over, over a while. For our warp core, this is the temporal phased overcharge warp core from Butterfly, I believe, and that gives us a nice cooldown on our bridge officer abilities if we find any uh, that need to cool down just a bit faster. Console-wise, engineering uh, conductive RCS with EPG, Constriction Anchor to boost exotic damage, Delphic Tear for bonus exotic damage and a bit of crit severity, and a nice uh, cone radiation attack that you'll see uh, in the video or that you have already seen in the video here. Science consoles we just load up on EPG. We got an exotic particle field exciter with the EPG bonus for 71.3 EPG. The exotic particle focuser with EPG and Drain X, EPG being primary for 35.6, then three restorative particle focusers with EPG and Drain X, same numbers there. Domino to reduce our cooldowns, and the chronometric capacitor to complete the four piece of the uh, chronometric calculation set, giving us this click ability here that boosts exotic damage and weapon damage. Now moving on to the actual uh, bridge officer abilities, running this out as a very light tack setup. The torpedo spread is mainly there to spread around our particle emission plasma torpedoes. Uh, might be getting rid of this in the future and going with a pure uh, science build with no uh, tactical abilities just to kind of run it how we used to run it back in the day uh, with the PvP team, but we'll see how that goes. Emergency power to engines procs our con officer which uh, reduces the cooldown of evasive maneuvers. You can see him right there. Then our Lieutenant Commander Science is focused around uh, structural analysis debuff, which procs the secondary deflector as well. Charge particle burst for a huge sphere attack that uh, procs that secondary deflector. Then two of our biggest damage dealers, gravity well for control and subspace vortex to go along with that gravity well. Then just a basic hazard emitters heal, tractor beam repulsors for another bit of AOE damage and possibly proccing checkmate in the future. 
then destabilizing resonance beam for physical damage and proccing the secondary deflector as well. Then this Lieutenant Commander Temporal Seat, Channel Deconstruction to Build Entropy, and Entropic Redistribution 3 to uh, do a mass uh, huge spike damage, uh, physical damage attack, and spread that entropy around. And then Causal Reversion 2, which is just a nice heal, but this could be changed out for something like Chronometric Inversion Field, maybe, to uh, help the team a little bit more. But uh, that's that. Now, duty officer-wise, um, one for stacking crit severity, the con officer, damage control engineer for chance to reduce this cooldown of emergency power to engines, Greg Amal to reduce the, uh, or to re reverse the direction of tractor beam repulsors, and two deflector officers to handle the cooldown of things like uh, charged particle burst. Now moving on to the traits here, uh, anchored if we're sitting still and we do that quite often when we're running science gives us a damage boost. Positive feedback loop, we heal ourselves, we do some extra exotic damage. Conservation of energy, we gain bonus exotic damage when we're being shot at by energy weapons. Innocuous re reduces our threat generation, which if you've flown an exotic science vessel, you know is a big problem, uh, mitigating that. Context for kings uh, is a trait from the discovery lockbox. Most cases, uh, when we're flying this, we're always taking damage, so this is giving us a damage resistance buff, but if we don't take damage, it will give us a cat 2 bonus all damage buff. Particle Manipulator, which it uses our exotic particle generator skill and is currently giving us plus 50 crit chance and 42.5 crit severity for exotic damage abilities. Photonic Capacitor, which uh, reduces the cooldown of Photonic Fleet when using science powers, but we might look at changing this out for something else in the future. Self-Modulating Fire, uh, when we critical hit, uh, our energy weapons and torpedoes gain 50 shield pen for 10 seconds. Just a little bit extra to power up this torpedo here. And then uh, Fleet Coordinator gives us a damage boost when we're flying with the team. That's self-explanatory. Charged Particle Reaction makes our charged particle burst bounce between uh, targets when we uh, hit them and basically gives us more shield drain. Out of time was here for testing, but here's the trade again if you want to have a look. Feel free to pause at any time if this is going too fast. Honored Dead, staple after the Discovery Lockbox that improves uh, survivability, grants damage resistance, or temporary hull depending on how many stacks we have. Exotic Modulation grants us Cat 2 bonus exotic damage uh, when we activate our Temporal abilities, and we do have three of them on this build. And then improved gravity well, which uh, is from the Science Andorian ship that um, increases the gravity well duration by 20 seconds and re reduces the recharge time of gravity well by 20 seconds as well, and debuffs that uh, primary target of gravity well. Now for space reputation, particle generator amplifier for bonus exotic damage, ox power defense, ox power offense, critical severity advanced targeting systems, and chronometric capacitor array. And this setup is probably a little bit too heavy in regards to the cooldown reduction, and that is something that could be tweaked going forward. I don't view this build as completely optimal right now, even though I've got 89k. And same goes for this skill tree here. Uh, from the looks of it, uh, this was missed, and this should have been filled in uh, when the skill tree was uh, put in place after the rebalance last year, but it wasn't. Um, and you can just have a quick look here at what the rest of the skill tree looks like. Specialization-wise, Temporal Operative is going to be granting us 50 Exotic Particle Generator skill, and Strategist, which we can use to um, gain some critical chance or critical severity while we're not threatening. So that's the build, everyone, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I am uh, having a great time with the Vern Temporal Science Vessel, and I'm going to be doing more with it in the future so maybe there might be a follow-up to this we'll just have to wait and see but if you like this video or found it all useful please do uh, give it a like or subscribe to us and maybe we'll see some more stoke content in the future so with that being said we'll see you next time everyone have a good day